Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Dial World. This is Georgette Taylor, your host. I'm so excited that you decided to join us today. I have an amazing guest with us. Her name is Yolanda Jordan. She is the designer behind My Pretty Brown Doll, where she specializes in crochet brown dolls with natural hair inspired hairstyles. She's also a blogger and she has a blog called My Crochet Life and she's an author. We're going to talk about her new book today as well. And thank you so much for joining us today on Any Doll World, Yolanda. Thank you so much for having me. I yes. am so, so excited to be here and glad that we could carve out this time um, for us to talk. Like I went back and I actually watched some more episodes of Any Doll Yay. World. So I'm super, super <laughs> excited to be here. Um, so thank you so, so, so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. I just, I just love the work that you do. I love your talent. I love your creativity. And I just love your dolls. They're just so beautiful. Um, so I just want to share with us, uh, with, uh, with all our listeners, uh, your doll journey. Like, where did your doll journey start? Um, you know, and how you decided to start crocheting? And how'd you ended up here on In the Doll World? So I started crocheting a long, long, long time ago. Um, <laughs> I was like seven years old when my great aunt taught me how to crochet. And at that time I was making dishcloths, washcloths. <laughs> they were like just little squares, but she told me they were dishcloths. I don't know if anybody ever washed dishes with them, but that's what she told me. And that's every time I finished one, I was like, look at my dish. And people were like, okay, girl. <laughs> but she's the one who first put yarn and hook in my hand. And she was just like, do what I'm doing. Like we didn't use any books, no videos, no YouTube at that time. We were just, like I said, she just said, just do what I'm doing. And that's what I did. And so that's, you know, my love for crochet started then. And I crocheted like all through high school. Mm -hmm. And even like when I first went off to college, I did not stop crocheting until probably like my second semester in college. But that's, wow. you know, thought I was grown and wanted to do what all the other folks was doing <laughs> and they were not crocheting. So I was like, well, I don't need to be crocheting either. And so I put my hooks down. And I did not pick them. And this was like two, uh, 1997, 98. I did not pick them back up in two, until 2011. And I started crocheting again in 2011. And at that time, my great aunt had passed away. And I just remember, like, I was like, I used to do this. Like, I know I used to do this. And so I started, uh, went to Walmart bought crochet, like every crochet hook, balls of yarn. And they had a book there, like learn how to crochet. And I was like, let me get this book. Cause I know I used to do this, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and so that started my, you know, I picked it back up again. And this was, like I said, in 2011. And at that time I was just making hats and scars. And that was my thing, beanies and infinity scars. And I called myself, don't get it twisted crochet. <laughs> and if you wanted a beanie or a scarf, I was the person to come see. Was like everybody, like I was everybody who knew me. I was like, you want a scarf? You want a scarf? You get a scarf. So everybody like got a scarf. Everybody got a scarf. <laughs> everybody got a scarf. And I was like, um, the doll making came. I made my first doll simply because I just wanted to make one. I, it was like a challenge. Like, can I do this mm -hmm. with my crochet skills, with the knowledge that I have? Right. And I remember going to Google and like Googling crochet doll. And this was like in 2013 and I Google crochet doll and not a single doll of color came up. Wow. And I was like, it didn't like really throw me. It was just like, I just took note. I was just like, hey, like, okay, these are all cute, but don't none of them look like me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hmm, okay. And like, again, it wasn't like a big, huge deal. It was right. just something that I noticed and I was like, okay. And then I went to Etsy and I was like, well, let me see what Etsy has. Maybe somebody on Etsy has one. And I actually did find one on Etsy. And that particular pattern was actually done um, by someone that I actually followed on Etsy, but she was not a woman of color and nothing, mm -hmm. you know, that it, that wasn't necessarily an right. issue. But I right. just, again, just took note of, mm -hmm. well, there you go. All the dolls <laughs> that I see, I only find one. And it's still not, you right. know, by a woman of color. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to take the knowledge that I know 
um, and the information that I have, and we're going to try to make this doll anyway. And I remember Simply Crochet Magazine had a doll on their cover issue at the time. And I was like, well, we'll use this kind of as a base for what I'm trying to do. Okay. But I had to modify it quite a bit because uh, Simply Crochet is a UK magazine. They can do some modifications to it. So in 2013, I made my very first doll. I named her Patience because she tried <laughs> my patience. I was just like, oh my. I was great. like, do people really sit and do this? <laughs> like, do they really sit and do this? Because I don't know how familiar you are with crochet. No, my, my cousin tried to teach me and uh, yeah, that there was not a good thing. <laughs> well, I would just say this, doll making involves the first stitch that you learn in crochet, which is the single crochet stitch. Okay. You are literally making that stitch over and over and over again. Wow. And I just thinking to myself, like, who would do this and why? <laughs> Why would they and, torture themselves like this, right? Yes, yeah, like why would they why would they torture themselves? Exactly. That was my thought. I was like, why would anybody want to just sit and just do this over and over and over again? But like I said, patience, try my patience. And I posted patience on my Instagram just to say, hey y'all, mm -hmm. I made this doll. Right. I know she look a hot mess, but I made it. <laughs> I did my, it. She's my hot mess. That's what you were saying. Exactly. She's my, she hot mess. my hot mess. But to my, my surprise, nobody else thought she was a hot mess. Other people thought she was the prettiest thing they had ever seen. And they were just like, oh my gosh, can you make me one? Oh, my daughter would love it. Oh, she's so pretty. I, and I'm just looking at like, are y'all looking at the same thing? I'm looking at <laughs> Y'all ain't got to lie to me, okay? Like, <laughs> I appreciate you, but y'all don't have to lie to me because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this doll. Right. <laughs> but then someone had said they were just like, she reminds me of me when I was a little girl and mm. I didn't see dolls like this. And then that's when it clicked in mm -hmm. my head. Mm -hmm. That's when it was just like, oh, that's why I noticed when I did my search. Right. That's why it, it didn't, like I said, it didn't bother me. But again, that's why I noticed that when I did my search on Etsy, that the, the one black doll that I did find was done mm -hmm. by a white woman. And I was just like, okay, I get it now, Yolanda, I get it. <laughs> and so that just sparked me to say, okay, let's try patience again. Mm -hmm. And let's see if you can't torture yourself and make it a little <laughs> less torture. Like, can we make this fun right, and so right. this time because patients had like I did the hair similar to what was in the magazine where you just cut strains of hair right. and I gave her like a little bun because she was supposed to be like a little ballerina and mm -hmm. you could take the bun out and just wear it in a ponytail so oh, it was just okay. a very simple mm -hmm. hairstyle okay according to what you know other people were doing right but when when the person had said to me you know the doll still reminds me of myself when I was a little girl it immediately made me think about well, what doll would I have wanted to see mm -hmm. when I was a little girl and I was like baby I need some afro puff like <laughs> right now because I mean what little black girl is not running around with afro puff I know that's Whether the truth they are big small little that's tiny little tiny like, ones yes you getting them like that's just your rite of passage to be able to wear your afro puffs and so i was like i need to let me see if i can create one with afro puffs and so that was my next challenge and so i had to play around with different yarns different mm -hmm. textures because you know certain yarns give you different types of texture and i was like well okay. i need them to look as real you know, as close to what mm -hmm. our Afro puffs would look yes. like. Yeah, possible. definitely. You cannot go doing an Afro puff and it, it doesn't, it, and it's not an Afro puff. There's, and it's not an Afro yeah. puff. So I was like, I played around with different yarn and then I found a yarn that I really liked and I was like, oh, I might be on to something here. <laughs> and so I posted little sneak peeks and people were just like, oh my gosh, we can't wait to see. We can't wait to see. And so that is when um, I call her Mia, but that is when Mia was born. And this is this is not the original Mia. This okay. is a version of Mia. Okay. I know her that apple puffs are awesome. With They're the apple so puffs cute. and the, the texture. And oh so this was my 
doll pattern where I didn't use anybody else's. I was like, let okay. me sit down and figure mm-hmm. out. And then this is Mia. This is where my pretty brown doll was born. Okay. Because what happened okay. is, like I said, I was don't get a twisted crochet. I was still making hats and scarves, but more and more people were saying, "I want a doll. I want mm-hmm. a doll." Mm-hmm. And because of the time commitment that it takes to make a doll versus mm-hmm. making, like I can make a hat in an hour, two oh, hours wow. at most. Okay. All right. You know. So and then a doll, if you know, it would require me to just sit and crochet for hours and hours. Like I would need a whole day if I was trying to make a doll in a day. So normally it takes two or three days, you know, okay. like, I uh-huh. say like a week time span, mm-hmm. you know, because I got a life, I got to stop, I got to eat, right. I got to do all these other things. <laughs> oh, come and on so, now, Yolanda, come on. You have to do all those things. <laughs> We're not allowed to do those things, you know, just stick an IV in me and keep crocheting. <laughs> So, but I had to make a decision and I was like, okay, are we going to keep doing hats and scarves Mm -hmm. or are we going to go and make these dolls? Right. I decided to go the route of making the dolls because they just meant more to me Mm. and they meant more to the people who I was making them for. And my thought process was, but you can get a hat and a scarf from anybody. Like, I promise you, if they know how to crochet, they can make you a hat and scarf. Now, this doll is a different, even though it requires just you knowing like the very basic stitch, putting those stitches together in a mm. way that creates this doll mm-hmm. that you can now hold this tangible thing right. is definitely a process. And then wow. for me to say that I'm only, well, let me not say only, I specialize <laughs> in doll and black dolls. I specialize in brown dogs. And the reason I say specialize and not only is because I make that like, because people ask me this all the time, like, you know, do you make dogs? Like, what if it was my pretty white dog? And I was like, (laughs) people, come on. Like, are we really going to do this? You know, and literally, I haven't had to explain it a lot. Mm -hmm. But my explanation has always been when I look in the mirror, it's a brown girl staring back at me. Mm -hmm. And who better to do me than me? Right. I'm not going to keep asking you to include me in the thing that you're doing when I can easily just go do it myself. Right. Exactly. And so for me, it was it's my pretty brown doll because I I need the little and sometimes the not so little girl That's to right. understand that that brown is pretty and yeah. all its shades. It's pretty. Yeah. And we're not going to say you're pretty for a dark skinned girl mm-hmm. or you're pretty for mm-hmm. this or you're right. pretty like you know why are your eyes so big why are your lips so big why is her nose so big now, yeah. all of these things maybe no let's can she just be pretty all by herself <laughs> and so yeah, for me that's powerful for me it was it's going to be my pretty brown doll because everybody told me they was like well you know you're not gonna be able to sell that many you putting yourself out the market who's gonna just buy you know and I was just like okay I hear you thank you for letting me know <laughs> thank you for letting me know thank you for and sharing right. thank yeah you thank for you sharing. for sharing here we are because yeah. so 2000 this was 2013 when I made the first one mm-hmm. 2015 I decided to switch from don't get a twisted crochet to just my pretty brown doll okay and in 2017 we decided to do my pretty brown doll full time. So this is nice. my main okay. source of income. It is how I support myself. I, I am great. beyond grateful <laughs> that yes, I am still wonderful. able to do it. Um, yeah. It's hard, but it 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 it's doable, and I'm mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah, and so it wasn't a you know like oh I'm gonna show y'all. It was more so can I right and why right. not. And, yeah. you know, why not? Why can't my pretty brown doll be a thing? Be something and that be sustains you. That right. sustains. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So exactly. That's how we got to that's 2022. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's the whole journey there. We went from great aunt taught me, went to college, picked it back up, had some scars, mm-hmm. made a doll, and then decided that the doll should be mm-hmm. a true representation of what 
it is to be a little black girl. And like yes. I say, I say little and not so little. No, don't not so little either. So many of us. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of the anymore. people who ask yeah. me for designs are they're mm-hmm. not for the little girl. It's for right. them. It's they're for just them. like right. Let me see myself in doll yes. form. And I'm like, <laughs> sure, I can do that for you. Yeah, and I was I was gonna say that you know so much it was was covered right in that little s- space right there because you know representation is is important we know represent you know having something that represents who we are no matter whether it's through clothes or through dolls right or on mm-hmm. screen I mean it's important for us to see something that something or somebody that looks like us. Mm-hmm. that says that we're we're beautiful and that we're accepted mm-hmm. and that we belong here and your dolls do that and just like you said that that the afro pop is just is the, is the pinnacle you know of <laughs> us being young black girls it is it yes. just is you know and uh, the fact that you spent the time to really figure out how to make that look just as natural as it could be says a lot about how you want your dolls to be seen and so i um, so we definitely appreciate that and you're right it's not just for little girls it's for all yeah. all women all ages because when we were growing up at least for women in my age group i we didn't see do- no way do we see dolls that look like that that had apple mm-hmm. pops i mean it's just um something that people you know we thought it was cute our parents thought it was cute you know this is the way we styled our hair but to see it represented in something else outside of our neighborhood or in a magazine was just really unheard of exactly and to so and especially now like like you said you know uh for this age group like because now you see more people embracing (laughs) their natural hair yes, yes but i still see sometimes like i see little girls who you know, you get to a certain age and you start to think, is this still cute? Right. Or why can't my hair be straightened? Or, you know, we even go through the process of where well, you get your hair straightened for special occasions. Right. And yeah. sometimes that, like, I'm just like, well, why isn't her natural hair good for the special, special occasion? occasion? Right. <laughs> like, I, I feel like, well, you can get your hair straight whenever you want to, you know, when, whenever that feels. But I want to reinforce that your hair doesn't have to be straight for this special occasion. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. you know, the special occasion is you and you mm-hmm. show up in this space as you. Now, if you want your hair straight and you like, by all means, straighten it, but don't straighten it because mm-hmm. you're like, you know, because right. I've seen that people are like, oh, well, for her birthday, I'm going to let her get her hair straight. And I'm just like, well, what's wrong with her? <laughs> the way it is for her birthday. Right. And we all do it and not yes. really think about yes. it. Yeah, so I, really I do important. that too, so that when they do see it, it's just like, that's you with your Afro puffs, with your ponytails, with your braids, with, right, with whatever, all of it. you know, yes. your locks, mm-hmm. however you choose to wear your hair. I need you to know that that's you and there's value in that yeah. because that's the other part for me when people ask me, well, how much does a doll cost? And I'm like, they start at $150. Mm-hmm. Now, a little girl may not know, you know, necessarily the value, like, oh, my mama paid 150 plus for this doll. Right. But as you get older and you begin to understand that one of the things that I tell people all the time is when you have these types of things, the same way some of us go out and buy these Louis Vuitton purses and these red bottom shoes, because Mm -hmm. we have put value Value. into that thing. Mm -hmm. Now this value is attached to the doll that looks like me. And if there's value in that doll, then that means there's value in me. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, goes way beyond yeah, doll making yeah. for me some people yeah. will be like girl you you taking it way too far <laughs> and i'm just like listen li- it, it, no that but it's part of that for me. it's part of that it is yeah. why you created that all of that goes into what you're presenting you know exactly. as a as a doll maker and a doll creator exactly. um uh, when you when you talked about a uh, price and you talked about value uh, let's talk a little bit about that because a lot of times, especially as creatives or doll artists and doll makers, mm-hmm. you know the time it takes to create a doll, whether it is a vinyl doll, whether it's a crochet doll, whether it is cloth doll, right? There's mm-hmm. time invested in that. And sometimes when people look into the arts, first they say, well, I'm not going to be an artist because I'm not going to get paid enough. People are not going to mm-hmm. pay me what mm-hmm. my work, you know, what my work is worth, really. Exactly. Um, 
So when you decided to transition into, into making my pretty brown doll something that was sustainable for you, did you have a little hesitancy about how much you charge people for the doll? And did and then, and then when you did charge them for the doll, was there all this all the conversation about why they should be paying that? So my very the first doll I sold, I think I sold it for forty dollars. Mm. Um, the How much time did you put into that doll that you sold? It, for $40? Exactly. Okay. And yeah. So forty dollars, and I like because to me it was I was just excited that somebody wanted to buy it. So right. it's forty dollars, and then I was like, oh. I, I should definitely raise my prices because the demand was high. Like I'm thinking like a business person, like, oh, yes. all these people you are an entrepreneur. It, then, <laughs> then, then clearly I got to raise my price. I didn't raise it by a whole lot. We went up $20. I said, so now there's $60. And every, like people, now the interesting thing is I had people still saying $60 for a doll. Mm-hmm. And now that I charge 150, that's the starting <laughs> price. Like, I'm just like, I can't believe that I was letting people haggle me for $60. But to answer your question, absolutely. I was hesitant because I think as a creative, as a designer, and especially mm-hmm. as a designer who does something with my two hands, it doesn't require me to leave my space. It's sometimes, and it's something that I absolutely enjoy doing. Although I talked about it being torture in the beginning, I still <laughs> love it. Um, and I think in our mind, we're like, I love this so much. I would do it whether somebody pays me or not. And yep. that's kind of still in the back of my head. Like, oh, but you would do this whether they paid you or not. Mm-hmm. And, I, and then you're like, so, but, so should they pay me? <laughs> so should they pay me? <laughs> <laughs> but should they pay you? And so for me, the transition came when I stopped thinking about it as, oh, this is just a craft. This is just like when I really started putting a value on my time Mm -hmm. and what my time was worth and what I had to give up in order to be able to dedicate this time to you, it no longer became your, because one of the things that I stopped saying is, like, I do not like when people are like, oh, you making me give you my money. You, I'm giving, no, 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 no. This is an exchange. You find value in what I do and you mm-hmm. have decided that you are going to exchange your money for this valuable thing that mm-hmm. I do. I'm not making you give me anything. Right. And it's really, at the end of the day, for me, it's not about the money. And when I talk about it that way, when I express it that way, like, a lot of people, and, and we, I know we're going to talk about the book later, but I had a call yes. with my PR team yesterday. And one of the things that I had to tell them, I was like, I am not a huge influencer in the crochet world in general. There are a lot of crocheters who know me. There are a lot of crocheters who purchase my patterns. But when I present my work, I am a doll maker. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. That's different. The cro- yeah. mm-hmm. They just happen to be crochet dolls. But I am a doll, I am a brown doll maker. I mm-hmm. make black dolls for little and not so little girls. Mm-hmm. That's who I am. Right. And so right. when I talk about them, how I explain them, when I talk about what my vision is for creating them and what goes into it, the crochet is the last part. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's like the last part for me. It becomes like one of my favorite, favorite designs is my Serena inspired design. Mm -hmm. I think I did that doll three years ago, four Mm -hmm. years ago, Mm -hmm. um, when she went back to the U.S. Open after having her daughter and she had got all the way to the final round. Right. And, you know, there was this controversy about her wearing her tutu um, to play tennessee. And at first it was a cat suit, then it was the tutu. And... I had this vision in my head, like I knew I wanted to make a Serena inspired design, but I had this vision in my head that the doll, um, should, she should be wearing the tutu, but I right. wanted her to have the braids in her hair from when they first started playing tennis. Right, right. And my vision for the doll was, what would young Serena say to older Serena? Mm-hmm. And young Serena would tell older Serena, and, and at that time she did the commercial with Nike, it's impossible until it's done. Mm. And so I took that and that was my whole premise behind this doll 
again, the crochet aspect never <laughs> came, like this is not about these prostatic stitches. This is not about yarn. This is about what would young Serena with these beads in her hair say to older Serena with this tutu on? Right. Baby, it's 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 impossible until you do it, and right. then all of a sudden it's not impossible anymore. Right. And so for me, that's how I work. But this is not about the crochet. Right. I'm an awesome crochet artist. I really am. I love the crochet community. I really do. But I'm a doll designer. But you're a designer, and, so, and you doll you you design dolls that that mean something for you. That exactly and mean something to other people too. There you go. And you know? so, and that's how I present it. And that's yes. why the price tag is the price tag. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, like I said, I got people who haggle me at $60. I rarely get a person who haggles me at $150. Mm. And I mean, <laughs> when I say rarely, like I can count on one hand, um, but the person understands that you that's are right. getting a fully custom doll. You pick the skin tone, you pick the hairstyle, you pick mm -hmm. the outfit. If you want it to be mermaid inspired, unicorn inspired, you want your doll to wear gold skates, pink hair, purple hair, glasses, I don't care. I right. want a doll with a tattoo. Like, oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. I love it. <laughs> you tell me and I'm going to figure out how to bring this vision to life via yarn. And this is mm. the starting price for that. I'm grateful that I have attracted the people who see the value in that. Yes. Who that is. understand mm -hmm. the value in that. Yes. They know nothing about crochet, but right. they know I want this dog that looks like, that reminds me of me, that's a reminder of who I am, a reminder mm -hmm. of who I can be. Because one of the other things that I say, I tell people, I hope it's just a subtle reminder of the mm. magic that is you. Just the subtle, because in no way, shape, or form could this doll ever encompass all that you are. Mm -hmm. But when you walk past it, when you see it, when you look at it, when it's yeah. sitting on your shelf, when your daughter picks it up, can it be just a subtle reminder? Yeah. That, that's me. And that mm -hmm. doll is real cute. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I got a real cute, pretty brown doll. You know. Exactly. <laughs> And, and I think that's why when I look at your dolls, that that's how, that's how I feel is because mm -hmm. it's what is what you, is what you put into the doll. It's so funny. I was talking to another artist uh, the other day, um, Greg Ortiz, uh, um, I did, mm -hmm. and I asked him, you know, he talked about, you know, being different uh, and creating dolls. And I said to him, well, what makes you, what makes your doll a Greg Ortiz doll, right? What makes, what you, do you bring to that doll that makes it unique? And he said emotion. And it was true because when I saw his dolls, that was the first thing I thought about it was like, mm -hmm. I could feel the emotion that was coming out of the doll, which is, you know, it's, and, and that's what you bring to yours. It's, it's a representation. It's important. Mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it has to show, like you said, that little glimpse of who you were as a little brown girl to, to connect you with that. And that's what your mm -hmm. dolls do. You know, Thank when you. I, when I look at them, they're just so, it makes me feel like, like this is me. Like when I look yeah. at that little doll, I would be like, well, that's me when I was doing that or that's me yeah. when, you know, when I was 10 years old, that's mm -hmm. me when I was 14 years old. And I think you're really great at showcasing that for people. Well, thank uh, you so much. That, yeah, and bringing that to yeah. life. And that's so important. That's, that is my main goal. I tell, like, I and I actually had someone ask me that, another crocheter. And she was just like, well, anybody can crochet. So what makes your crochet doll yeah. so different than all the other crochet dolls? And my, my answer is a little bit different than Mr. Ortiz because, baby, it's me. Like, right. do you know who I am? Like, right. I am the secret sauce. I don't <laughs> I sell patterns on how to make these dolls. Right. You can go buy a pattern. I promise you, it still will not be a my pretty brown doll because you are not Yolanda. And right. that's not me being cocky. That's not me being, you know, my ego, my head is big. That's me understanding that the gift of that's this right. is in my two in hands, hands. the that's same right. way it's in your two hands that's if right. you make yours. It's going to be whatever you whatever choose you to put choose. into it. Mm -hmm. I yeah. choose to put this, me. Mm -hmm. I tell people there's a piece of me that goes into every single doll. Do not spend your money on a My Pretty Brown doll if you don't like me. Because you're not going to like your doll. You're going to be mad like, ah, 
I really, yeah, because well, it's all of me in that. Like yeah. that's me. Yeah. And so that's what yeah. I say when people say, well, what's the secret? Me. I'm the secret sauce. Yeah. And so you will never get the full recipe because you are not. Right. You're not. <laughs> right. Right. They're not you. Exactly. Exactly. I totally, I totally understand that. You know, and again, I, not, not ego because some people think, oh, her head, she don't believe, you know, the, the ego. No, she don't but, it's, but it's, but it's <laughs> no, but you know, but I think as an, I look as an entrepreneur and as a creative, you know, I think you have to, you have to. Um, you have to be proud and you have to know who you are when you're creating your work, you know? And, um, and I'm just going to tell the truth as a black right. woman, right. I have to, yeah. because if not, it is very easy. If I listen to who the world says I am and what I'm capable of, this would not be what I would be doing because the world says that I cannot do this. The right. world says, and I'm talking about when I walk out into the world and I tell people, but I go into the bank. <laughs> I had a very interesting situation with the bank. I got an advance on my book because that's normally how book book work. Yep. <laughs> when you get a deal for a book, you get an advance unless you decide you don't want the advance. I decided I wanted my <laughs> I understand. Going that. to the bank. And the bank was just like, no, that's not how this works. You, uh, who, how are you an author? Where's the book? We need to see the finished book. Okay. Listen, okay. <laughs> I was just like, are you kidding me? And this was a, they, I had to get my publisher on the phone. Your had, this was a three day process of them verifying my book advance check. And now my, I'm no longer with that particular bank, but one of the questions that I asked I them be. <laughs> before I left was if I was white, if my name was not Yolanda, would this have been a question of who would give me this much money? You know, cause what they kept saying is, well, we've, you've never gotten a check this large. I know that, <laughs> but today is the day that I got one. Can we not be happy for me for that? Like, I'm in the bank excited because you're right. I have never gotten a check at one time right. for this amount. You are absolutely correct. But why would that, like, why would you diminish that? Why right. would you tell me that, that, well, and then I had to, because society says as a black woman, who would give you a book deal? We don't know you. You're not famous. I can't wait to go back to the bank and wow. show them the book. Because it wasn't uh, like I was trying to cash it. Right. It wasn't like I'm was saying, oh, give me all this money. Right. I, I just wanted you to put it into my bank account. Like, because I actually wanted it to sit there for a while. So I could be like, y'all, look at my bank account. <laughs> it's not like it's a, you know, some yeah. real name publishing right, company. Right, exactly. Yeah. So real, Never a reputable like, company. Three right. Publishing company. Right. And you're asking me, why would they give me a check for a book that? is not released yet. I, and I'm uh, like, so that's how never they do never heard it. of a book it bank. That's never how, exactly. It. That's how they do it. That's what they do. <laughs> and so needless to say, I say all that to say, if I listen to who the world said I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing, it would not be this. Yeah. Because the world says. Yeah. Yeah. No. That you shouldn't do that. See, that's why, but you know, again, go, we're going to go back to that and we're going to, we're going to move on. But that's why the dolls are important. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's why the dolls are important because they have to show that we're re represented in so many mm -hmm. different facets and so many different exactly. ways and so many different mm -hmm. ages and styles and colors because that is who we are as people exactly at the end of the exactly. day you know uh so i wanted to get back to your doll you were saying that you're one of your favorite dolls that you did was uh, serena serena williams mm -hmm. doll um, what was the most challenging doll that you could, that you decided to work on? So my most challenging, and <laughs> she's actually contacted me to see if I can do it again. So there is another author who I know because occasionally authors will contact me and say, hey, can you make this character for me from my book? And okay. depending on the character, I'm like, yeah, a lot of times though, I realize what they want is they want like a whole bunch of the dolls mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I will say my dolls are kind of one and done like okay. they're one of a kind, one of a kind. Mm -hmm. I normally do not repeat them if I do I'm only going to repeat it once because it still goes back to the fact that this is done with my two hands 
And right. even if I wanted to, a lot of times I just cannot create the same yes, exact, the same thing exact thing over thing. again. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And so I limit them to one. <laughs> you get one dog. But this particular book designer, she had, uh, not book designer, author, mm-hmm. she was like, can you create this character? And she was like, I've asked several different crochet artists and they all kind of declined me. And I'm like, well, let me see what it is that you want because maybe I can understand why they are declining you. Mm-hmm. So she sends it to me and my immediate thought was no as well. I was like, girl, <laughs> no. Because the doll is absolutely gorgeous, but it is a it's a brown it's a spider girl mm-hmm. but not the spider girl like spider-man spider girl right right i'm talking about spider, eight spider. Legs, big all right. um, spider uh-huh. girl okay and then she got hair and she had a uh little heart on her back and she was very detailed very detailed. Mm-hmm. Hit. and i was just like this is a lot and my dolls tend to be on the smaller side and i was like you know, if I'm adding all these extra limbs, I'm going right, to have her be bigger because like mm-hmm. she had a regular body, but she wanted her to have, so she ended up having two arms and two legs. Mm-hmm. But I told her I would do it. <laughs> when I tell you, I struggled and struggled and struggled. Like I was calling all my crochet friends, y'all, where am I going to put this extra arm? <laughs> I don't have enough room for this leg. Her head is too big. I can't put the clothes on her because how mm-hmm. do the clothes fit? And she had like, what are what am I making? What am I? And they're like, Yolanda, you're making a spider. <laughs> so we need you to think of this in terms of the spider. I finally got it done, and she oh, really nice. loved her, loved her, oh, loved her so, so nice. much so that she has contacted me and she's like, well, the spider has evolved and she's still a spider, but now she has <laughs> butterfly wings. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> really? And she's like, you're the only person I know that can do it. And, th-. and I'm like, no, no, I, I think there's other people who can do it. <laughs> but I thought, I said, I'll think about it because right. I was like, it, that was a lot. So that was my most challenging Mm -hmm. okay um other than the spider doll as far as skill that that was the most challenging as far as skill Mm -hmm. my most challenging as far as like the emotion and yes the the doll Mm -hmm. is if someone tells me that the doll is for someone who's passed away right right i try not to do memorial dolls because Mm -hmm. i take that energy on yeah yes and i'm just like you know i'm so sorry but i try not to sometimes i miss it like the last one I did, she didn't tell me until mm, after the dog was Okay, done. so you didn't have to be in that space, right? Exactly. Yeah. But then I felt like, oh, well, I don't know if I honored your daughter in the way that you would want her mm-hmm. to be honored because I made the doll, like, very lively. Right. And she was mm-hmm. like, no, 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 that's what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I wanted to remember her like this. Yeah. And so you did exactly what she was like. I didn't want to remember her you know right at, yeah as she was getting sick because i didn't know that you know her daughter had been as sick as she was and right she had lost her hair and i gave the little girl these you know mm-hmm. long floor you know like she had spiral curls and and she was like that's exactly how i wanted to remember oh, oh God. i'm glad that <laughs> this worked <laughs> out but i wow. try my hardest like if some if they do mention it i just tell them i say i can direct you to someone else because i do know right. someone who makes beautiful memorial dolls right i can direct you to her right but it's just not for me not your it's, right and i understand yeah, that it's, yeah, just, it's, it's hard thing. for me yeah yeah I can, I can understand that mm-hmm. uh i was talking with a sculptor um he sculpts the smaller dolls um he's going to be on the show um, and, and I asked him that too. He does a lot of historical figures too. And and I asked him, and he said, you know, sometimes he gets really emotional when he does them because he remembers, mm-hmm. you know, what they had gone through, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, so speaking of that, speaking of historical dolls, or uh, mm-hmm. which ones have you done? So I did an Oprah inspired doll. Mm-hmm. Um I I want to do so for me, historical, like. I don't yes. think about like the people who have passed. Oh like, no, yes. I yes, don't necessarily, necessarily want to do like mm-hmm. a Rosa Parks or right, so yes. because I feel like they've been done over and over and mm-hmm. over and over again. When I think of I think of history makers now, like I think mm-hmm. about who are we gonna be talking about? Like who right. am I gonna be telling my grandchildren about? Like who right. are those people? Mm-hmm. And so like I have Stacey Abrams on my list. Nice. I feel oh, that's like gonna be a great doll. 
Yeah, That's she did not awesome. get the hype that she deserved. And I was like, boy, I need you in dog form. So and now she's really, back really in the running. Be... Now she's back yeah. in the running. So that's So great. you can really be hyped up the way yes. that you deserve. So she's on my list. Like I said, I did an Oprah-inspired doll. Um, that was for a UK magazine. Um, oh, okay. And so the, it was a free pattern. So they, they have that design. Um, and then for... Um, for like space, like I said, Stacey Abram is at the top of my list. Mm-hmm. I've done one for someone like there's someone who inspired me a lot, Dr. Yaba Blay. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely love her. If you are on um on Instagram, if you go to she's on Instagram as Dr. Yaba Blay, but that she runs the account Professional Black Girl. And mm-hmm. that account just it does something for me that I just cannot explain because it's not what you think it is. When we say professional black girl, she's Mm -hmm. talking about showing up as your true self Mm -hmm. and all, Mm -hmm. like she really believes that you deserve to be in whatever room you are in. And you should show up as who you are Mm -hmm. in that room. And so she highlights us in a way where this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And You know, some people might say it's ghetto. Some people might say it's unprofessional. Some people might say it's this or that. But you are a professional Black girl everywhere. Like, this is a true profession showing Mm -hmm. up as us. Right, right. Every single day. Yeah, every single day. So I had to do one of her. That she that's like in one of my top five designs because okay. I'm talking about I got to do the big hoop earrings <laughs> and she had an off the shoulder top and it was just really really cute <laughs> and so hers was one of my favorite designs but as far as history when I think about you know my historical dolls and mm-hmm. what I want to be remembered for those are the type I think about who's making history, history now. now right, right. and that's what right. does that look like for us mm-hmm. With that being said, I have done a Black Panther inspired doll and not Black Panther the movie, Black Panther the movie. Oh, yes, the movie. Um, right. So okay. her name is Miss Truth, mm-hmm. and Miss Truth is about her business. Like, if you go to my Instagram <laughs> and you see her, she got a fist in the air, and she mm-hmm. like, the revolution will not be told. <laughs> like, and people are just like, oh, my gosh, who is this? I'm like, Miss Truth is not here for your games, okay? She is not for play play. She is here for the movement and the movement only. Only, and, right. <laughs> and like, she has on a little leather jacket with her Black Panther patch on the back. And nice. So, yeah. That's nice, though. That's nice. Yeah. So, but you know, you, but, it, but it has to be about all that, all that. It's all history. It's either what has happened or what continues to be happening. Mm-hmm. And you have to, you have to be able to, 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 speak your truth right to speak exactly to speak about that part that is still you you know ex- um ex- and that's ex- or that still affects you either way mm-hmm. so um i'm so excited uh, to talk to you um so now that you are doing uh, the dolls you have created mm-hmm. courses uh mm-hmm. and workshops for people so share a little bit about that what are your courses and workshops uh, about so- and also you have patterns too that other people can do yes. right Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, Mia was my very first doll pattern with the Afro Puffs. That was a whole emotional experience for me from the business side of things. Because, again, I understand, you know, that this was a business. And I understand that I cannot make all the things. Even though my dolls are in the price ranges that they are, I'm still limited. You know, my mm-hmm. income will be limited by how many I can actually make. Right. And because of the time that's involved in them, it's a limited number of dolls. And so I'm not going to get rich off of making dolls. Right. Mm -hmm. So I definitely had to figure out a different way to bring in income. And so for me, the the first thing was definitely patterns. I was like, well, I can sell crochet patterns. If I, you know, write down how to make this doll Mm -hmm. similar to a sewing pattern, um, you know, people will buy it. Right. The conflict came because... The question for me was, well, do I call this an African-American crochet pattern and nobody Mm -hmm. finds it? Or do I just call it a crochet doll pattern and it just falls into the seat of all Mm -hmm. the other crochet doll Mm -hmm. patterns? And I went back and forth on this. I went live talking to my audience, like, what do y'all think? And I had people on both sides. People were just like, oh, no, you should definitely just call it a crochet pattern. Because like you said, who's really searching for Mm -hmm. African-American crochet doll and you know, mm-hmm. nobody's looking for that per se. And I was like, but at one point in time I was. 
I was looking for <laughs> you it. Were, and I right. Couldn't find it. <laughs> right. So somebody and else so, was looking for it. Exactly. And so I had a really, really good friend, Aniqua Wilkerson of my kind of thing. And she pulled me to the side, we're not in person, but virtually pulled me to the side. And she was like, you know, at that time we didn't know each other super well, but we knew each other. And she mm -hmm. was just like, well, I'm here to tell you as another doll maker that, you know, mm. sometimes somebody's got to be the first one to do a thing. Amen. <laughs> let this be the first one. She mm -hmm. was like, I understand it from the business side that, you know, you don't, you want people to be able to find it. You don't want necessarily mm -hmm. anyone to feel excluded or like, mm -hmm. oh, this is not for you. But on the flip side, when are we going to have something that is for us? Even in this space, when right. do we have something that is for us? And so mm. it became wow. the African-American crochet doll pattern. And it was one of the very first ones that was titled that or one of the very first ones that was by a black woman, mm -hmm. one of the very first ones that featured a doll with Afro puffs. <laughs> and it was slow going at first because couldn't nobody find her at first. <laughs> but the more I showed up and yes. the more I talked about her, the mm -hmm. more people began to find her. It is my top selling pattern to this day. Wow. And now if you go to Google and search for crochet doll, she is still one of the first dolls that comes up. She will Yay. show up on the first Google page without you even having to put African American. Right. Face. That's awesome. So, That's beautiful. Yeah, me trying I mean, to avoid it and she still ended up being exactly what I was. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm going to be in the space anyway. Like just call me what I am. And I'm going <laughs> right. to find my way. Exactly. Find my way. That's right. Find, find my space. way to be exactly where you want me to be. Yeah. And so um, that was my first pattern. And then, of course, people were just like, well, when's the next one? Or how did you do this? And so, you know, when someone sees a doll, so like the school girl, for example, so when cute. someone oh sees her God. and they're like, how did you do her, her hair? hair? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's in the pattern. You can get the pattern here. And same thing, like, oh, how'd you make her dress? And she has on her backpack, you know. So when those questions come up, like, so how cute. did you make this? And how did you do that? Then that's my opportunity to create a pattern. Now, I don't create a pattern for everything because sometimes it's just a modification of something right. that I've already done. And mm -hmm. I will say that, like, oh, I just changed it. You know, I just mm -hmm. changed this part. That's why right. it looks different. Right. Um, but if it's like completely different, like if it if I'm if I changed it more than like 50%, then I'm gonna probably write a new pattern. Okay. Um, All right. And okay. so that's how the patterns got started. And, and then it went to, well, for the people who don't necessarily read patterns or yes. some people are just better visual that learners, be like me. they need yes. to see it they gotta see in it. order to do mm -hmm. it. That's where the courses and the workshops came into play okay. because I was just like, well, let me record or show you via video how mm -hmm. this is done. Okay. And then you can use that. And so um, if you purchase a course from me, the court, you have unlimited access to it. Very so cool. once you pay, now the courses, they are a bit more pricey mm -hmm. um, only because of the time that's involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so mm -hmm. um, like I do have a full doll workshop where you're making the doll from beginning to end. See, I have a couple of hairstyle courses. Those are less expensive. They're like $25 showing mm -hmm. you um, just different techniques of how to do some of these natural hairstyles because as a crocheter, Sometimes your your thought is to just do what they've taught you to do. Like for the Afro puffs, a lot of people are just like, oh my gosh, how do you make Afro puffs? How do you make Afro puffs? Like, but, and to me, I'm like, what do you mean? How do you make Afro puffs? And I'm like, y'all, these are pom poms. <laughs> like, so in the crochet world, there's a thing called a pom pom maker. Like everybody knows oh, how to okay. make pom poms. Okay. But I don't know why they couldn't see. Right, the pom -poms, pom poms, right? Or apple books, right? And because people were like, "Wait, how did you make the apple?" And I'm like, "No, these are pom poms." Like, come on now. And like when I say it, it's like a light bulb goes off of them. Like, oh my gosh, like have I been that? And I'm, and then it made you know I realized no. What happens is we're so focused on this mm -hmm. thing only does this. Only like does, I can right, only use right, pom -pom only right. Mm -hmm. yeah. to make pom-poms. Pom right, right. I can't use them for anything else. Like, Hell, you know, yeah. yeah. Like, 
just showing people this is how you can use these techniques that you mm-hmm. know and understand in crochet right but to create something different, something different. Um, or right, to do right. something different right. with it and right. i think that's the beauty of black doll makers i'm just going to go ahead and say that too one of the things that we do and we do really well is taking some of these techniques that are mainstream mm-hmm. and manipulating them to work for Mm -hmm. brown dolls or black Mm -hmm. dolls because you know one of the things that we say in the black doll maker community is a black doll is not simply using brown yarn like Mm -hmm. we have to be clear with people about that Mm -hmm. it's not just using the brown yarn there are some other aspects of your doll that need to be taken into account for this to be a black doll the hair being the most important like so, so 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 besides the hair explain that so besides the hair yeah, but what's no, one not. little other thing that you think that that makes a, so, a, a, a doll you know a black doll so the way that we use color in our clothes in our outfits how we put an outfit together you have to kind of be in the doll maker community to see it <laughs> And when you see it, you see it. We wouldn't really do that. It's cute no, on her. I don't understand, yes. Mm-hmm. But we really wouldn't do that. And it's not to say that you can't do it. You just don't see it. Like, you're not going to see, or let me say not, because the moment I say not, watch somebody go find one. It will be rare for you to find a, wa- a white doll maker make a white doll with hoop earrings. Because the thought of her oh, wearing yeah, that's true. hoop earrings is not something that they would normally and, and do. Fact, they I would, would normally go as wear. far to say as you most likely, most white dolls don't even have ears because the thought of even doing earrings in general is not something that they think about. The thought of accessorizing the doll with accessories is not necessarily something they think about. You don't notice it until you notice it. And then I wow. looked, I was like, oh, they don't have ears. I never thought about that ever. If you go look, just look at them and you will be like, oh my gosh, these dolls don't have ears. But it's because they don't, they're not thinking about putting earrings on their dolls. Yeah. See, we, boo, no, wait, we, you know, hold on. She got to have some hoops. She got to have some studs. I know little girls that get bracelets. Bracelets. They bracelets. Yes. Yes. At six months. Like that's yes. what, again, like almost yes. like a rite of passage to have your bracelet with your name on it. Totally and so it's these that. real yeah. little subtle mm. differences mm. that kind of peek out. And like I said, you don't notice it until you notice it. Now, my <laughs> dolls, most of them do not have lips. Now that right. is just my aesthetic. That's just my aesthetic. However, a lot of other black doll makers do. Yes, I've seen. Mm-hmm. And they do you know, beautiful right. colorful lips on mm-hmm. their dolls. Now, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, why, why, you know, why don't you do the lips and things like that? But it's, my aesthetic is just, I right, it's your style, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah for them yeah, not, yeah. I do have some that do have really, you know, lips mm-hmm. turned out really nice on them. But for the most part, I don't. But for mm-hmm. like my other doll makers who do, uh, that's something else that they pay attention to. Like, right. yes, we can wear a red lip, but we got to be careful of how that shade of what shade of brown and what shade of red mm-hmm. are we putting right. together? Yes, yes. Because this just can't be fire truck red, right. and she's you know the darkest brown yarn that you got. We got to be a little more subtle than this. Now she can still wear a red lip, but we're not about to make you know. Yes, a I mean. we're not about to do that, and so <laughs> we have to be mindful of that. We're, and these are things that they don't necessarily have to think about. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's, you know, that's what the, you know, and like I said, it's not like a huge secret or anything. It's just, you don't notice until you notice. Okay. So you, you did, uh, you did the, uh, the courses and, uh, and the, uh, the workshops and the patterns. Then mm-hmm. you transitioned over to creating your own book. So how, did that book, how did your Pretty Brown Doll Crochet Doll book come about? I'm so excited oh, to hear goodness. about this. It almost didn't happen, but that's the cover yes. that I'm so excited I'm about. I'm so happy for you. May 3rd. 
Beautiful. So, as long as everything goes to plan, May now, 3rd, are they pre order? Can they pre people can pre order yes. them? This so it is currently okay. on pre order everywhere okay. that books are found Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. I've okay. even seen it Beautiful. at Walmart online. So everywhere Yay. that books are sold, that you can so pre order this. Congratulations. And um, Beautiful. it will ship out to you on May 3rd or okay. by, I think so that you can receive it on May 3rd. I think that's what they said. But May 3rd is the official release date. <laughs> okay. Um, the My Pretty Brown Dog Crochet Patterns for a Dog That Looks Like You almost did not happen. This has been a, we started this process in February of 2019. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and I said no twice to, mm. um, to them asking me to do this, um, mainly because I just, I'm not, I don't like to say imposter syndrome anymore. Someone mm. uh, mentioned to me, how can we be an imposter when we are the original? So <laughs> I was like, well, thank you for letting me know because I never really <laughs> thought about it like that. So now I won't say imposter syndrome. I would just say, I just didn't think I was good enough. Like, yes, I mean, so, hey, I, I totally understand yeah. that. Being, I, feeling I worthy did not think I was That's a whole nother thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so, but they, um, thank you my editor was adamant that I was and that she didn't want recommendations for somebody else she wanted me and if it wasn't going to be me then they just would table this to another time and um, um for me what ended up making me say yes is that my mother did pass away in April of 2019 oh, and my that. immediate thought was what do I want my legacy to be Mm. Um, this is my legacy because this is forever and ever and ever yes. and ever. Yes. And so I'm gonna try not to get emotional. It's okay. But, um it's okay, sweetie. That's the reason <laughs> I said yes. And I'm so, 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 so happy. I'm super sad that I had to say yes for that reason. Yes. But I'm so happy that I said yes. Mm -hmm. Um, the process of doing this taught me so much about who I am and what I'm capable of. Mm. Um, and then just to say, as my friend told me so long ago, sometimes somebody got to be first. That's this right. This is the first Yay. crochet doll book with all Black dolls in it. The very first. That's and wonderful. So, yeah, like, I'm just like, yo, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, and this is all my work. And it's in a book that somebody will be able to hold and have and, right, you know, right, yeah. like under a publishing company, the same publishing company that published A Diary of a Wimpy Kid is publishing a book by Yolanda Jordan. That is like so, so crazy to me. That is so beautiful, um, Yolanda. And I'm so excited about it. What you're getting, uh, if you haven't noticed, Mia is <laughs> on the front cover. That's mm -hmm. her. <laughs> uh, but she is the base doll and all her clothes are removable. And then okay. from that base doll, you're able to make the other designs and the outfits, except for the mermaid and the ballerina. Those two, of course, mm -hmm. their clothes are kind of permanent. They don't change. But like, okay. if you want to make the school girl, there's a Parisian girl, there's a scientist because <laughs> black girls can be scientists too. Uh-huh. Um, nice. And there's a few more that did not make the covers so you got to get the book to see what the to other, see who other ones are. is right because <laughs> some people ask is that all the designs on the cup no there mm -hmm. are actually a few more how in many there how many designs in there how many designs do you have in there um so with the base doll and then there's 12 outfit changes okay so right. on the cover we have six so there's six more that are inside okay. oh okay great yay mm -hmm. So then yeah, did, that so. Come, did that come about from you being in, because I know you've been in two crochet magazines, I believe, right? Been featured well, in there. Did that no. come from that or was that totally mm -hmm. separate? Okay. It's to like, I, you know what? I've never asked her where she find me at. <laughs> I need to ask her that because I do not know. Like, I honestly do not know because I, the magazine publications came after I got the book deal. Oh, wow. Um, okay. That's great. So I, that is a great question that I need to ask. <laughs> I'm like, can you tell me again where you found me? Because I was not that big on Instagram. 
Oh, you um, won. Have, okay. No, like I think at the time when I got the book deal, I think I had, I don't even think I had 10K followers yet. Like wow. I was not like a big deal. And I'm definitely, like I said, I'm not a big deal in the crochet community. Right. For right. what people consider to be a big deal. Like I'm right. not the person that you're calling like, hey, I don't consider myself an expert in the field of crochet per se. There are other people who are like true, true experts. Uh Um, And now I know some things, but I don't consider myself. So that's a question that I need to ask them because I honestly do not know how they found me. (laughs) Um, And this is not something that I was out there pitching. Like as if, in fact, there was my friend Anika with my kind of thing. She was doing her own book that she was going to self-publish and mm-hmm. I was going to give her a pattern to put in the book. I was just like, oh, oh well, if you put one of my patterns in the book, I would be so appreciative. <laughs> and so, yeah, she was just like, and so when I called her and I told her, you know, hey, I got this book deal. And unfortunately, like one of the stipulations is that I can't be in anybody else's book oh, until okay. yes, yes. After until this. After she was like, girl, girl, if you don't be quiet, like, what? <laughs> Like you got a whole book with all I'll, your patterns right. in it. Like, I'll take your stuff out. One. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so, um, That's super. She was super beautiful. supportive. But yeah, That's I am great. so excited about it. Like I said, the process is long, though. If any of your other listeners, followers are thinking about, you know, mm-hmm. doing a book, whew, <laughs> the process is long. And not only is it long, but um. Again, you know, sometimes somebody has to go first and you learn and yes, I will be able to share after, after my book is completely published, I will be able to share and say, do this, not this. Right. Do right, this and exactly. not this. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I understand. I mean, you know, when we made the, the big, beautiful dolls, so having plus size fashion dolls for the first mm-hmm. time was something that was totally new. Nobody had ever done it. So I understand mm-hmm. about being first, you know, yeah. sometimes that's a good thing. I mean, it's always a good thing, but I think a lot of times you, you don't have any, anybody to follow, you know, you, you're setting and, the pace. Exactly. And, and you catch the L's for setting, you, you take the all L's. the losses. Exactly. And we, we yeah, do, do that's that. That's what I tell people. I yeah. said, please understand that I took an L on this big time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not in a, like, not in a way that I'm still not going to celebrate this and that this is still oh, yes. not awesome. Mm-hmm. But like I said, when it's all said and done, I'll be able to come back and tell the person who comes behind me, listen, now when you go to the publishing company, baby, tell them this right. and not this <laughs> right. and do this and not this because if right. you do this, this is what's going to happen. Right. And right. I don't want you to have to take the same L that I took because mm-hmm. I, like you said, because I didn't have anybody to follow. To follow. I didn't have right. anybody to ask. And then the people who I did ask found out later that they wasn't really looking for me to win anyway so they gave me some information that was good you but see what they didn't realize is that well, you can't block what's for me you thought you could but you cannot because you yeah. thought that you was going to stop them from publishing this book and they said oh we don't care about that we still gonna publish this book mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so um yeah it's it, it was, it's just a it's an interesting journey um if you can self-publish you might find it better to go that route. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the good thing about this is that, you know, I get PR. I have yes. professional photos taken. Yes. I get all. I mean, yeah, it's always I pros do. and cons, no matter which way. Exactly. Way you go, you know, either way exactly. you go. You know, I don't have to house things. all these books at my, you know, little two-bedroom <laughs> apartment. <laughs> so, yeah, don't have to worry about any of that. I don't have to worry about where the shipment coming from. I know, right? Like, like oh, my gosh. None of like, that. Am I going to be home when I ordered all these books to come to my house and then have to ship everything out? I'm so excited that it's out there. And I'm so, um, I'm just so excited to have this conversation with you because I think you bring so many different elements into, into what it is that you're doing. Not only do you crochet, you know, you make amazing crochet, beautiful brown dolls. Not only do you do that, you know, you offer people opportunity to have courses and workshops and patterns, you know, and not only do you do that, now you're an author. So, and, and, and an entrepreneur in general. And that's, I think that is so great because you represent so many different areas uh, that you can help to empower young, young, you know, young women, young black women, young women in general. And, mm-hmm. and women, you know, in, 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 in all those areas, because you went out there and you did it first. 
And that's, uh, Somebody, that's yeah. just a great, and that's yeah. what I tell people because they're, you know, people are just like, well, how can I make money? So, you know, I want to be able to uh, crochet and make money from a yes. crochet. And I was like, you know, one of the first things I tell them is, uh, well, here's two things. First of all, unless you're like the high, high, high end, like your luxury pricing, you're not going to be able to sustain yourself simply on what you make right, right. with your two hands. So start there. That's number one, because I just don't want people to be out here thinking that, oh, I play with yarn all day and I make all this money from playing with yarn all day, because that is not the case. Um, there's so many you other diversify. pieces and parts mm -hmm. to this that allow me to be able to do this full time. And so you have to think about what is going to be your unique selling point. What is it, What are you going to bring to the table besides what you make what how you can make. you monetize that monetize as well that. yeah yeah that's so true and i so mean it's just it's the same thing in yeah. like with doll makers i mean you know with vinyl doll makers or, or resin doll makers or anything like that it has to be something else that is sustained yeah. them. it can't just be exactly. the doll it has to be the accessories or it has to it's, be another exactly doll cool. you know it's never gonna yeah. be just one doll or if it is one doll then it's the, the price is so much, you know, it has to be yeah, so high. Like I, I can live off of the selling one doll for an <laughs> right. entire month. <laughs> right. But in order to do that, you still have to be careful about accessories and all the things that are going to make that doll worth them worth, paying exactly. all that money. So, And yeah, then are you in front of the people that have that type of money? Because right. that's the thing that I have to think about. You know, my, where is my influence at? Where, where do mm -hmm. people find Where's your me? market at? Where yeah, do exactly. they see me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, are these the people who are paying that type of money for something like mm -hmm. a doll? Um, so the, the, all of those things have to be taken in consideration. I am so beyond grateful that I have found a way to make this work for me and to sustain me and my family from doing this. Um, and if I wasn't, I don't know what I would be doing. I was going to ask you, what would you be doing? Okay, but so can you can you imagine just making scarves and hats with your aunt? You know how oh, this gosh. has become something that is so much more. Yeah, than that, you know. Yeah, it's and, it's and crazy it's so to me. Some days I wake up and I'm like, you're really doing this? Like this is what you're doing? Like this is what you're doing, girl? Like girl? Like are you serious? Well, this is what you're doing, Yolanda. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate you doing what it is that you were called to do um, and step up to meet, you know, um, your purpose and what you are called to do at this particular time, you know, because yes. um, represent, as we talked earlier before in the show, representation is so important. Um, it's so important to represent the people that, the, the person that you are to, to everybody um, so that they can see that it's okay to be who they are. That's what's important. And that, you know, and that's why, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting for me, you know, to do this show is because I get an opportunity to bring so many different diverse people in the doll community to everybody else. So yeah, they can yes. see your talent and your creativity. And, yes, because when I was watching one there. of the other episodes, I was just like, like, again, like you just said, to see it from a different perspective, to see it from a different perspective. <laughs> Like there are just some parts that I didn't think about or that I don't necessarily see because I do it this way. Mm -hmm. And then to see somebody else do it their way, I was just like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about it like that. Like that is so awesome. And so I think, I, I can't think of her name, but um, I think it was Moonaz or Moon. I, I have to go back and look at it because I was watching okay. it right before we came uh -huh. on this one. Mm -hmm. And so, but to hear her talk about what her process is and how she goes, and I'm just like, now, I didn't even think about it that way because that's not my process. Like, right. my mind doesn't go right. to where hers does, but it was mm -hmm. very important. Like, it's it's very interesting to see the different perspectives, and I'm so, so happy that you are doing this oh, and that you found you. me and that we're yes. able to connect. Because, so like, I, I told my PR team about you yesterday, and, oh. she was like, and so I have to send you the PDF link of the book, because she was like, make sure you send her the PDF <laughs> link so she can review it, and I was like, well, I don't think she crocheted, she was like, but she still might want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'd love to see what it looks like. Thank you so yeah, much. So no, my I cousin, my cousin crochet. You. She tried to yeah. give me a crochet girl look. We went and we got and got yeah. me some some yarn and, and some needles and girl. And I think we're sitting in my garage for like 
five years. I'm like, that's just, you that's, know, that's, not, that's just that's not my thing. That's not yes, my thing. So. But I'm so glad it's your thing. That's all I'm going yes. you know. And I'm glad so that this you so is much. your thing <laughs> and that you're doing this and that you're allow, like, allowing us to be on your platform to share our stories because it is so important. And so thank you so oh, very much. Oh, no problem. No thank problem, you. Yolanda. Thank you so much. Uh, so where can they find the book and where can they find you and the rest of your beautiful dolls at? So I am everywhere as at my pretty brown doll. So if you're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash my pretty brown doll, same thing with Facebook, my pretty brown doll.com. <laughs> so if, if you search for my pretty brown doll, I should come up somewhere in that search and you can follow me in all of those places or one of those places. Um, I will be completely honest. I'm not as active on social media as I used to be because in addition to all of these other things, I do have a nine month year old son. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, that, that takes up pretty much the rest of your nine time. time, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, and then like I said, for pre-ordering the book, Amazon, Mm-hmm. Uh, Target, Walmart, Book Barnes and Noble, <laughs> everywhere books are sold. Um, there will be a link on my website soon if you okay. want a signed copy of Yay. the book and yes. some little extra goodies. You'll be able to order that directly from me, um, but it will come after the release date. Just know okay. that, like it's a okay. it's a pre order to the pre order. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just thank you so much for spending time with us here in the Doll World, Yolanda. It's been it's been wonderful to learn about your journey, to learn about all the things that you're doing, and, and I want you to have so much success with your book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on in the Doll World. <laughs> Bye.